Have you got problems getting a grip? Bullfrog snot might just be the answer. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. Now, a few weeks ago in video 118, I showed you um, a couple of trains running up the Helix. Uh, one of which in particular had real trouble coping with that kind of incline. And in response to that video, I had quite a few guys suggesting that I ought to try something called bullfrog snot. Charming. And a gentleman called Arthur Ray actually paid for a bottle for me to go and get. Such was his enthusiasm to see me struggle with it. So that's what this one's all about. How you can use another product to get grip onto your wheels to allow your locomotives to get up inclines. So this is where we'll start. So we've got our H1 and it's currently putting three illuminated Pullman cars. I mentioned they're illuminated because they will have slightly more drag. So with speed step 99, which on the Digitrack system is flat out, we'll send it up the helix. And as you can see, it's not the fastest, most powerful locomotive that you've ever come across. But rest assured, it can get to the top of the helix without too much trouble. At the top of the helix, there is a piece of track that's unpowered. So there is no fear of this loco going racing off the end. So there's our baseline. So let's try it with four coaches. Right, so we've seen it with three coaches. Let's go and get a fourth. So once more, speed step 100. Well, we found the limit, four coaches. So what is this stuff? Well, it says on the jar, bullfrog snot, extracted from the suffering sinuses of free range male frogs as fast as we can round them up. Just kidding, it's a sophisticated, specially formulated, room temperature curing one part green liquid plastic with unique properties that make it the ideal solution for improving traction on model railroads, slot cars and numerous other quirky little problems left to your creative, fertile imagination. Apply just enough to evenly cover the surface with a thin layer. Too much makes a mess, so take it easy and practice. Let it cure overnight or at least several hours. Bullfrog snot is tough and durable, but will eventually wear out. Remove the old with a hobby knife and replace as before. Cleans up with water, keep from freezing and kryptonite. There we are. Let's set about this then. And now we need to decide a way ahead. And just to let you know, I've got um, a little old um, Backman Dynamis, um, trusty old thing, great for doing bench work on. So what's the cunning plan? Well, this loco has a set of pickups on both of the main wheels and also on the three axles in the tender. The tender is relatively light. So my cunning plan is to apply the bullfrog snot to this um, back axle here hoping then that the power from the uh, tender and the front set of wheels will be enough to push it along and we'll have enough grip from that single axle to drive it up the hill. And just to test that out, if on this rolling road I start it up and I just lift the loco off the rails and as you can see the tender is supplying the power. Right. 
Bullfrog's not time. So what I've done now is I've connected the uh, Dynamis through to the aft axle of the um, tender and then hopefully when I power it up as we can see these pickups obviously work and the main wheels turn. Lovely. Actually they're a little bit manky so what I'm going to do is I will clean off these main wheels um, and get them nice and clean and get back to you. And what I shall use for that is a simple jar of isopropyl alcohol and a cotton bud and we'll see how clean these come up. Now the wheels appear to be clean and uh, there's no time like the present. And um, yeah, I don't know if you can see that texture, it's a kind of fluidy, rubberized -y texture. And I thought I would best decant it on with a cocktail stick. So I'm at a sort of a, a crawl speed, as you can see, with the wheel. So all I'm going to do is dab it on this, on this wheel and slowly build it up. No, a bit too much there. The difficulty seems to be is just trying to get it even. There is a thin patch just there. See what my timing's like waiting for it to come round. Well, I think that's not bad. Let's try the other. Hopefully you can see okay. I think the, th the trick might be is to keep the wheels going just slowly so that you can avoid any spatter. And then when we come back in the morning we'll have a very thin coat of this rubberized solution on it. Well I've managed avoiding getting it on the rims so that's a start. I also did notice that there's there is one pickup on this uh, little wheel, wheel set at the back as well. It's not uh, it doesn't pick up from both tracks but um, yeah there's a pickup on there. So, is that enough? You never know about these things, whether less is sometimes more, if you, uh, if you know what I mean.
I think we're good. I think it's a case of just that, putting it on and then um, see what you get in the morning. Rather exciting, isn't it? Yes, you wouldn't want it going too fast because they'd obviously chuck it off and then um, you'd get all this um, snot as it is stuck up in the brake gear so it does make it uh, whoops it does make perfect sense to leave it ticking over at a nice slow rate so i'll leave that to tick over for an hour or two and then uh, get back to you in the morning now, whilst we were waiting for that bullfrog snot to dry, I thought we'd do the same with this little Backman warship, which is currently pulling 10 coaches. Earlier, it pulled nine without a problem. So if I put this up to speed step 50, and we send this one up the helix. Well, she's definitely struggling and she's about to give up. I think that's enough punishment. So I'll put bullfrog snot on one set of bogies. So a similar routine as before, one handed here, because my other hand is holding the crocodile clips onto the uh, axle at the other end. So just a little dab. And I really don't think it takes, you, you need a great deal at all. And then tomorrow we'll see if it can manage its 10 coaches. A bit too much. There we are, not too much on there, but probably just about sufficient. Well, it's now tomorrow and it's time to check out to see if the bullfrog snot has done its magic. Well, as you can see, it's, it's lost its bright green colour and now you can just see a dull, very thin green. And I imagine the steam loco, oops there goes the coal, yeah it's much the same. And now for the exciting bit, let's get them on the helix. Now as the bullfrog snot is only on one bogey, I thought we would have that as the, the lead bogey. sort of seems more sensible. So exactly same as before, send it to the helix, speed 50.
well, not quite the success we'd hoped for. But not one to give up straight away. What I thought I would do is just give it a try with the bullfrog snot on the after end. And see if we get any more success. Okay, so once more again, speed 50. Let's go. Well, it was clearly better. We've got at least one extra lap. Oh. Or even two. But it is clearly struggling. So what I shall do, I'm going to send it back and I think we'll hit this helix flat out. Now, perhaps through sheer stupidity, and with a run up. Let's see how it gets out. Flat out. Well, I think we can see that it's struggling enough. It still can't get up there without slipping. Um, so either we need to revise the helix or lessen the load on the loco, i.e. reduce it from 10 coaches, because clearly this isn't working. So now we're revisiting the H1. And as you recall, it was four coaches and it didn't get up the first level of the helix. So I'll repeat that again um, and the speed step was actually flat out, wasn't it? So straight up to full power. Oh dear. Oh, hang on. A bit more life now. And there it goes and giving up. So where does that leave us with bullfrog snot? Well, I believe it's given us around about an extra 10% in traction, really. Um, going from three coaches to four coaches, but still struggling, um, it's, it's a weak loco. The loco probably needs more weight. I couldn't use the power base because it's very, very difficult to get the magnets underneath it. So I may have to revisit that loco um, with a little bit more lead inside the locomotive itself. I didn't really want to put the bullfrog snot on both of the main driving wheels, 
excuse me, <coughs> on both of the main driving wheels um, because there's too much in the way of pickups. There's very little weight in the tender, so I didn't really want to do that. And as you can see, the old warship there really didn't want to go up with 10 coaches. You know, it was, it was happy with nine, but it did um, increase its performance. So there is something to be said about it. One thing I haven't mentioned, and that if you're a user of traction tires and you can't get your traction tires, um, some people are recommending that you can use this and then lay it into the groove where the traction tire used to be, which makes perfect sense to me. It is, of course, a temporary product and you'd have to replace it. But how do we, where do we go from here with Chadwick? Well, you wouldn't know this, but since the previous Helix video, I've actually increased the incline of the, uh, of the Helix and um, it's clearly too steep. I was doing some um, investigations into what it could and couldn't handle because this is the slope that's critical that runs up towards the viaduct. So what I, what I did was I raised up all the sections of the helix to therefore minimise the slope here. The helix would be higher and therefore the slope would be uh, less severe. That's not worked. So what I've done with good old Lee Stoddart, my um, track planning guru, um, is we revisit it and I'm going to take a spanner to the helix and I'm going to drop all the levels down and add another uh, spiral to it so it'll give me a much more gentle run up to uh, that slope and of course the helix will be um, about a 1 in 42 rather than the 1 in 37, 35, 30, about 37 I think it is now because of the adjustments I've been making. So if we can get it up from 1 in 42 we'll see if it works from there um, but again yeah, because of the design of it with the um, M8, uh, the rodding it's very easy to adjust so if you're going to go down the helix front rather than sort of chop up bits of wood and make your own if you make your own using threaded rod it's much simpler to do so there we go um bullfrog snot <laughs> great name and did you notice <laughs> when i put the warship on i didn't even notice that i said i put the bull the bullfrog snot on the front bogey <laughs> whoops clearly the winter evenings fly by in my house I would like to thank one chap whose, whose name escapes me. Um, he sent me a wonderful comment. He's laid in bed with COVID in a hospital ward. And he did mention that uh, he found my channel a bit of like relief, let's say interesting. And I do hope you're getting better and hopefully you're back home. Um, I do view this latest lockdown, not as a lack of liberty, but more an opportunity to get stuck into your model rail, your model railroad. Um, you know, do a bit of house decorating or whatever, but please don't sit in, slump in your chair and watch videos like this hour after hour. Get out there and get your layout sorted out. There you are, a bit of from the heart stuff. But there we go. Um, thanks as usual to the people who donate to the channel and of course my patrons, if you'd like to be one, there's the button. Please don't forget to subscribe and a video here and here. Take care. See you next week. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.